Hey there, my name is Jeff Bull, Manager of Developer Advocacy. And my name is Martin Saunders, I'm the Product Marketing Director for Holland. It's really good to have you, Martin, I appreciate Thank you very it. Much. Uh, being at Cisco Live, especially on this last day, there's just so much activity going yes. on and getting a chance to talk more about our actual technologies and our partners mm. um, and how our partners are implementing these technologies, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, mm. And specifically today, you know, here in the DevNet Zone, we spend a lot of time talking about automation. Mm. Um, but I, I think that word itself gets probably too blanketed over mm. too many things. Um, so I wanted to narrow it down a little bit to, to think a bit more about, you know, there's the automation that we might do as net DevOps or yeah. you know, a software developer where we're literally writing code yeah. to make a set of specific actions happen repeatedly yeah. that we can monitor. But there's a whole other side to mm. automation, which is taking data and simplifying it so that mm. someone can make actionable decisions off of that data. And yeah. I thought that might be a really interesting way to kind of lead into what Highlight offers, yeah. especially right on the backbone of Meraki in this case, but others as well. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So the services very much are our focus. Um, and I think it's very easy to to forget, particularly in a kind of the world of, of Cisco Live, where we're talking about a lot of technology and very kind of deep level uh, information. That actually, there's a lot of people in our industry that aren't technical that have to deal mm -hmm. with technology, and those people have different skills. They have to look after customers. They may be most more service orientated thing. They may not they may have come from a completely different industry than IT, um, but if they have to look after the customers, they have to understand what is going on, and they need to have things presented to them in a way which um, is clear and simple for them. Um, but it also can be shared with the people that they're looking after, so they're using a common set of information. Um, so that's essentially what, what Highlight is, is, is here to do. Um, we, we try and help those service people, both in the service provider, if a service provider is involved, um, and then down to the enterprise or the business um, who's consuming that service to have a common view of everything that's going on um, in the network, the SD-WAN layer, the underlay, sort of broadband ethernet, right. cellular, um, and then the LAN and Wi-Fi. Um, area as well. That, you know, I think that really resonates for a lot of a lot of folks. And one of the examples I was just thinking about as you were saying that is kind of in the middle of the, we're in the, the hub at Cisco Live for anybody who was attending or mm. has attended any of these in the past. We're in the, the hub and then kind of in the middle of the hub, there's a space where my previous guest named Jason um, kind of was overseeing the mock knock or basically yeah. the, the, the consumer facing version of the knock. Yeah. So you could tell everyone, here's what we build, here's what runs the whole event. Yeah. And what's interesting about that when you walk by and look is you'll see all kinds of architecture diagrams and some imagery. Mm. It's all very technical, it's, and if you know what you're looking at, it's really useful, it's helpful yeah. information. But it did dawn on me when I was walking by that, for a network engineer or someone highly technical, those displays and that information, it's beautiful, it's yeah. great, it's like Nirvana, this is fantastic. Mm. But there's a lot of people who attend these events, like you mentioned, mm. who are either maybe not non-technical, but are not the person who's gonna do the click ops every day. Yeah. And they just need to understand some contextual data to make yeah. a decision. And that kind of information is still too in the weeds for yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, it, and it's, it's probably unfair me calling them non-technical. No, because, no, it's, you know, okay. it's, 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 it's not my mum that's having to come along and support these networks. <laughs> Thank God, I mean, that'd be awful. <laughs> but imagine that. But, um, but yeah, but these are people that have probably been in the industry a little while, and they understand the, 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 the kind of the rudimentary elements of it. But mm -hmm. they're not somebody that you would expect to jump onto a router and start putting on iOS codes and this kind of stuff. So um, yeah, so they need, they need to have a kind of a higher level view of what's going on. And one of the things that can be quite challenging for those people is that, particularly in a service provider environment, there's so many different technologies that they have to deal with. You know, imagine each customer is going to have a slightly different twist on mm -hmm. it. Some might be using CAT switches, some might be using Meraki switches. There may be some of the old Cisco SMB switches somewhere. You've got routers, you might even have a bit of Linksys and that kind of stuff in there. You've got all sorts of different um, um, technologies in use. And each of them presents a slightly different set of information in a slightly different way. And you need to try and aggregate and simplify that all up into a simple view. So we, we have these things called heat tiles, which represent a location. And it's just a very simple tile that is, if it's green, it's good. If it's red, it's bad. If it's amber, it's somewhere in the middle. And you can click on it, and you can then see the different services at that location. So there may be an Ethernet switch, or there may be an SD-WAN box and some tunnels, or there may be some Wi-Fi access points. And again, you can see very quickly from there, are they red or are they green? Um, you can drill down a bit further than that and see what's going on, but much beyond that, then, that kind of role of that person then needs to get handed over to somebody else. Right. Um, so it may go to a second line or a third line engineer. They can then see the information in Highlight go, oh, I think I know what that is. Right, let's jump into the Meraki dashboard and go and do something about it. Um, the customer doesn't have to go into, or they can go into the Meraki dashboard if they want to, but 
um, the, the service people can have that simple consolidated view and we can then hand over to other things like vManage or the Meraki dashboard or to DNA Center or whatever it mm -hmm. is that's used to then do the, the, the change management and the configuration and so the real kind of low level uh, config stuff. It's fantastic. It, it really it, it really creates an intersection of multiple things, and one of them happens to be something we've been talking a lot about this week. Carlos Pereira discussed in uh, one of the keynotes earlier this week about the full stack observability platform. Yes. Um, this idea of observability or observance of different yeah. telemetry. Yeah. Um, and I really like how you describe that a service provider or a service consumer. It's not just what we think of as like an, a managed service provider, yeah. but something some entity that is providing some services and someone yeah. who might be consuming them oftentimes need to just simply make a decision about yeah, yeah. how the business is operating. And we, I think oftentimes, especially as network engineers, most of my career was spent as a network engineer, yeah. you, we default to, let me go log into something and see what's happening. Yeah. And yes, it's a, it's a path you can go down, but there's always these other business level decisions that might be able to be made with mm. the contextualized data that don't have to be, we're, we're troubleshooting raw networking components or whatever yeah. it happens to be. So I find that interesting. How, how do you see Highlight um, as, an, as an organization really trying to focus on solving for those sorts of problems um, using these different technologies that Meraki and others provide? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I think um, kind of Highlight's role in all of this is, um, is ultimately to try and make that complex network as simple as we can for the people that were involved in the, um, involved in the service. Um, what I, what I found interesting with the, certainly with the full stack observability like uh, uh, Thousand Eyes and, um, um, and that kind of thing is, is that's fantastic for being able to see right away across the application from one kind of one side of the network to the other and everything else. But from a kind of from a service provision point of view, um, it kind of needs to be simplified down from a um, to something that essentially is sold as a contract or as a service to a customer. Um, and so what, what we're kind of focusing on there is where a service provider is selling a service, um, they might have a service level agreement, an SLA, a contractual agreement with the customer as to what they will do and how they will do it. Um, and that's the, that's the kind of level of things that we focus on um, and how we try and represent that up in highlights as much as we can. Hopefully that's answered the question. Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, so now we've talked about um, you know some of the over the overarching themes of what Highlight does and yeah. how you how you interact with these different products, Meraki and others. Yeah. Um, could you maybe dive into a couple of use cases that would really yeah. resonate for yeah, folks sure, watching? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So I'll give a, a, an example from a service provider point of view, and then maybe one from a one from a, uh, an enterprise or a business side. So from a service provider point of view, let's look at the service manager. So that's somebody who looks after a customer, has to look after all of the services that the customer might have. They might meet with them on a monthly basis. And when they go and meet them, they have a report that they've got to compile. And that report might have uh, ticket information in it. It might have information about how well the services are running, 99% availability here, 80% availability here, load issue, all of these kind of things. Those reports can take those service managers days to, to compile. Um, and it takes them so long because they've got so many different sources of information. They've got to bring it together and it all comes in different formats. So by having it in Highlight, they can go into Highlight, pull off a report and they get an information set down on everything that they've got with that customer. Um, and they can sit down with the customer and, and do something about it. And then we have APIs into Highlight that means that you can even bring that information into a, to a different system, a different analytics tool, so that you've got all your, your, your report ready to go, you're walking through the door, you just click refresh, pulls the APIs, pulls the information in, mm -hmm. bang, you've got a report ready to go from that minute. So that's from a kind of service manager point of view. From a, from a customer end of things, um, and this is where we're all a little bit poacher come gamekeeper. So the customers may not have, well, they may have multiple service providers. And those service providers might be getting them all a different set of information as to what's going on with their services. That customer it finds it very difficult to compare what they're getting from one service provider to another. So if they have, the, if the enterprise has highlights and they've, they've taken it on, they can get, again, a common view across all of the different service providers. And we've had enterprise customers that have, by far and away, justified the use of Highlight just based on the service credits so they can get back uh, from their service providers. So again, simple information, very easy to share, mm -hmm. but gets you a very quick result, quite often the result that earns money, which is where we all want to be in the end. Absolutely. Um, so that's two very simple examples, and it's many more. Absolutely, and I appreciate that. One of the themes that I've been noticing in a lot of conversations I've had over, these, over this entire week is that 
there's a lot that as a as a product manufacturer like Cisco is, mm. along with many others, Meraki as an example, et cetera, yep. there's a lot you can put into, let's use the graphical interface as a, the graphical yeah. user interface as the example. It's not the only example. But if we use that as an example, there is a lot of data you can, and information and, and you know, nerd knobs, so to speak, that we can put into those, <laughs> those platforms. We, but we all know that yeah. the more we, more we do that, yeah. the less functional it becomes because it becomes overwhelming. There's too oh, much, yeah. too much to be aware of and too much to manage. And yeah. I think, you know what we all talk about, and we're trying to teach here in the DevNet zone is how to leverage the APIs yeah. to be more extensible to kind of make make the art of the possible more real. And yeah. what you described that Highlight does is a lot of that. Like, look, let's, we leverage Meraki, but we can also leverage these other platforms, yeah. leveraging those APIs, and take that data that we're already getting yeah. to give you very specific, actionable things you can go do. Yeah. And I love that you make it even further extensible that through your own APIs, others can then pull can out the data. Yeah, that, exactly. that, that's really a big deal. Yeah, though it's, it's actually one of the most difficult decisions we have is what data do we not bring into Highlight? Um, because it's, you know, we can build essentially, a, you know, it's not going to be a replica of the Meraki dashboard, but we can get everything in from the Meraki dashboard via the API. But that would be an utter waste of time. Why recreate the Meraki dashboard? Meraki dashboard does a great job of it already. Um, so what we try and do is try and bring in what we know is just important and useful and, and not complex mm -hmm. for the, for the non-technical user to understand what's going on and nothing else. Um, and we do that because of the complexity, but we also do that because of speed, because People don't want to be sat watching things slowly loading. You've got to be snappy, snappy, snappy. Right. So remove all of the data that you don't need. Just focus on purely the service information um, that is important and nothing else, and, and, and base it on that. Um, because otherwise, if you go too far, and you, you know there are competitor tools out there which have incredible amounts of information, but it's like watching the Matrix, trying to understand. You know, you've got to be trained like Neo right. to just understand this information, and then they present it in a really bad way and all of this kind of stuff. So. Um, yeah, simple stuff, nice vertical alignment. So if you have time-based stuff, you just line it all up. So if there's a problem up there at 12 o'clock, it lines up with the 12 o'clock that's down there and the 12 o'clock. Right. Just simple design rules. That makes a lot of sense. It's, you know, it, and it really reinforces a lot of things we've been talking about when, over the years as we've been teaching uh, community members, car customers, partners about how to automate and how to use these technologies yeah. is, you know, it's one thing to learn the, the basics and the things that we try to teach here and then one of the places I think almost nirvana that you want to get to is what Highlight is doing as an organization, which is we're going to pick out a use case yeah. for one group and we will build a thing for that. It yeah. doesn't need to do a million things. Yeah. It just needs to do this one thing yeah. and answer these questions for this group of people really, really well. Yeah. So I really appreciate that. Yeah. As we're winding down, mm. is there anything you want to leave the audience with about how to interact with Highlight and the technologies you have? Um, sure. So the nice thing about what we build in Highlight is that it's um, it's a purely SaaS based service so it's very very easy for us to spin up to spin up accounts um, we can spin up a trial account very easily so if you go to um, uh, highlight.net www.highlight.net um, you can go on there you can spin up a, a, a trial account if you have a Meraki dashboard API key once you're into Highlight you can put the key in within about 10 minutes we can have the Meraki SD-WAN or the Meraki mm -hmm. Wi-Fi network in and you can start showing how it can be used um, Beyond that, then obviously there's a lot more deeper conversations that we can go right. into, but that's a great place to start. And uh, we're always on the end of the phone or an end of an email if anyone needs help as well. So. Fantastic. Well, Martin, thank you so much for being thank here. You. Really appreciate it. And for any other information you want to find about Cisco Live and our developer network, go to developer.cisco.com slash Cisco Live.